Today we're going to talk about the motorcycle. I thought I'd give you some information and we'll go for a ride. Get around here and take a look at this beauty and see what we're talking about here. This is a Yamaha FJ09. Okay. Uh, I've done a few mods to it. The windshield is not the same windshield. The old windshield is over here. Let me show it to you quickly. Here is the old windshield, and I'll put it up so you can see it. This is what the old windshield looked like. And so you can see that with the new windshield, I gained about oh, two or three inches. And the reason I did that was because in being uh, six foot one, the wind was blowing right into my uh, helmet, and it was making for an uncomfortable ride. And so uh, I found an aftermarket one, you can see it right here, it's called Stream, and uh, this has worked out really well for me, I really like the, uh, I really like the, um, the windscreen, uh, the buffeting on my head's gone, and it makes for a really nice riding, you'll see that today when we go out, um, you'll see how the buffeting does or does not work, you'll get the whole deal. Anyway, uh, let's see, what else have I done to the bike, I'm trying to think, oh, I've got this little, uh, uh, that's a, um, let me go around the other side. That's where I put my, my uh, Garmin, my navigation system, and what's really nice is over here, there is a, uh, there is a nice um, place to plug it in right here. I have a plug right here. Can you see it? Okay. So that works really nice. So that's my Garmin, and that, that, like I say, that works really nice. It's very, very helpful. Oh, and you probably already noticed this. I have a, a butt saver. Uh, the Yamaha seat is very uh, hard, and uh, it's not comfortable to ride more than an hour or so. At least it wasn't for me. My butt was killing me. So uh, I got this, and this changes the whole riding experience. Then... I'll show you in a little while. I've got a uh, ring that I put on here that holds a bag, a tank bag that goes right in here. I'll show you that in a little bit when we go off for a ride. This is a uh, Yamaha FJ09. And, oh, one other thing. I put one of those little electric uh, little uh, sensors in here that when I hit the brake the first time, it blinks three or four times, and then it goes on solid. And that recycles every 15 seconds. I think I got it set around 15 seconds. And uh, that works really nice, so I really like that. That is very, very uh, welcome piece to have. There's a little small storage area under here, enough to put a few pieces of paper, and that's about it. Um, basically worthless. Um, let's see, what else? This is a 2015. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. It's a 2015 Yamaha FJ, FJ09. Um, I bought it a year old at the dealership. And um, what else can I say about it? It, uh, it um, cost around 10,500, about 10,500 was the MSRP on the bike. It is an 847 cubic inch liquid cooled inline three cylinder double overhead camped engine with 12 valves uh, about 115 horsepower and about 65 foot pounds of torque it's fuel injected it has a six speed multi wet clutch i'm not very knowledgeable in clutches so somebody else can help me out about that uh, let me see what else would i want to tell you about it oh, i told you it weighed about 400 and 62 pounds, it has disc brakes. The gas tank will hold uh, about 4.8 gallons, which is really good. The fuel economy is in the mid 40s. It has ABS, it has traction control, which you can turn off if you want to do wheelies. It has LED headlights and an LCD instrument panel. So it has a lot of stuff, which I'm reading from my notes here. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> Because I'll not remember it all. I'll forget something for sure. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? I think we're going to go for a little ride. 
Um, I'll show you the uh, instrument, pa instrument panel. And I'll turn it on and you can see it. Hopefully you'll be able to see it anyway. When you turn it on, this comes up. And tachometer right here, miles per hour, gasoline. This thing doesn't work for crap. Uh, I'll have a full tank and I'll be riding along and say, boy, I'm doing great mileage. I've gone 40, 50 miles, it hasn't moved. Then I get up, get 75, 100 miles, all of a sudden, boom, it goes down to half full. Then it goes, boom, down to, I got about an eighth left. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> but I know, I got pretty much gauged, you know, where I'm at, so I, I haven't run out of gas. Um, it tells me temperature, uh, it tells me um, engine oil temperature, it gives me all kinds of information and I can scroll through this, I can see it or not, I can scroll through this screen and you can see all the different uh, options I have there on the screen. I think there's some reflection, you might not be able to see that, but anyway, it scrolls through a lot. The end up here says I'm in neutral, which is nice, you can tell what gear you're in, I really like that, because uh, you know, I have trouble counting to six, so <laughs> I really need that. It also has a mode, Mode switch over here, if you look down here where it says STD, um, you might be able to see that. I can change that to one, A and B, excuse me. So it's either standard A and B. And what that does is it basically changes the, the way the, the, the motorcycle reacts to the throttle. Okay. So here we are for our first run. I got the the um, camera mounted on the helmet on the side, right side of my helmet here. And you're looking at my, uh, see if you can see it. Yeah, this is my cell phone. And my cell phone goes onto the bag here and I can see what's going on. I can turn the camera on and off. So let's take a ride and see what we got and see if you can hear me and we can see stuff. You can see where I'm looking all the time too. That's what I like about having it on the helmet. You know what I'm doing. Because otherwise you don't know what I'm doing. Beautiful day. Very nice out. Let's stop. Make sure we don't have anybody coming roaring down at us here. This looks good. And away we go. They just redid this road. Oh, I put my helmet down so you can hear me. They just redid this road uh, a couple of months ago. And they put the seam, I don't know if you can see it or not, they put the seam right down the middle of the road here. So what it has, it's got a little, what I call a squiggle point in the middle of the road. So if you go to ride in the middle of the road, you're gonna feel a little, the bike's gonna get a little, uh, not much, but see the, the center strip of uh, tar that they put down overlaps into the middle of this road. They never rolled it properly. They never merged it properly. So for a guy in a car, they don't, they don't notice anything. But you and I in a motorcycle, this is a pain in the butt. I never had this before, but now I've got it. And so uh, what the heck? So this is our really first time with the head-mounted camera and the um, and the mic inside the helmet, and we'll see how all of this works. How the all of this is going to work? I hope it works good. I notice that my helmet squeezes my jaws in a little bit, and I feel like I'm sounding talking a little different. I'm in fourth gear. There's third gear. There's second gear. I never touch the gas. I keep it right on like I'm going on a steady, a steady pace. And uh, this first gear. And it really works good. We'll take a look here. Usually it's busy out here this time of the day. So I'll stop so we can take a look. And now we can go. I don't 
like to run the revs up too much when I first take the bike out of the barn. I like to get everything up to temperature and going along smoothly. So we'll take it easy and enjoy the beautiful ride. And my damn uh, directional signal is still on. I just turned it off. I hate this. The only thing I hate about the bike at the <laughs> turn that... I'm too stupid to remember to turn the directional off half the time. I don't know. That's crazy. So... You notice I'm shifting, you don't hear anything, and the reason I'm shifting, you don't hear anything, I'm keeping the throttle. I'm keeping the throttle at a steady pace, and it works out pretty well. The spike ride's so great. I, I sound like I don't work for Yamaha, I don't know anybody in Yamaha, they don't send me anything, I don't have any deal with any motorcycle dealership, it's just me. No deals, no anything, but just me. And I'll tell you right now, this is an unsolicited comment, this is one hell of a bike. I just absolutely enjoy it, it's got everything you want. Got the power when you need it, got the brakes when you need it, got the ABS when you need it, got the traction control when you need it. It's 40 some miles to the gallon, 50, 40, 50, somewhere around in there. It's got almost a five gallon tank. Rides great. You can see I'm on the bike. I mean, this is really nice. It's uh, just beautiful. Now let's back down to fourth gear, third gear. And then we're going to have the second gear. That's second gear. These arrows, you see the big white arrows in the road, you got to be, for a motorcyclist, you got to be careful. And including this white strip uh, down the center of the, well, not a start, a dotted line now. But you got to be careful because uh, those are, uh, I don't know what you call them. Those are, um, it's like a heavy plastic and it uh, it sits up on the road you know it's not just paint but it's got a thickness to it and it's rubbery and when you go over it it's a hello what the hell was that <laughs> so you also down at least down here in Florida you got to be careful um, that these these uh, things that are out here are really uh, can be a problem and when you when you're riding around you want to be extra careful when you you know you're looking at this stuff and same on the right hand side if you get down here on the right hand side you can get yourself in crap over there too so you want to stay away from uh, all of this stuff and uh, as best you can and don't do any turning or accelerating on these babies because they'll send you for a loop third gear second gear see there's one I just went over there now when you're going around the corner Sometimes they stick one right in the middle of the corner. Here's one right here. See it? I'll go right around that. I don't want to touch that. No, thank you. Now we're going to go over here and take a right one. What they call Route 42. I try to leave a little space between me and the car. And uh, I look at an escape point either left or right. I keep it in first gear. If I, like there's a guy coming behind me here, it's got a uh, big truck and uh, if he didn't slow down quick enough then um, you know I'd have had to uh, move forward left or right to get to try to save my ass or, or even jump off the bike. You know, I've known guys that have done that because of some ass wipe behind them that uh, didn't turn on the brakes. So you got to be careful on that. So. a big truck in front of us and you guessed it oranges they're picking oranges now 
So that's a big deal. Oranges. And you can see by the back of this truck, there's a few oranges in there. Oh yeah, look at that, huh? Loads of oranges. Yeah. So there you go. One of the things I like about being in Central Florida, I was never going to get a motorcycle again. Sold my last motorcycle. I had a beautiful BMW K1200S. I really loved that thing, and I went and I sold it. Um, and that was the last bike I owned. And then I get down here, and a friend of mine, he's, oh, I got to get a motorcycle. This is great. Mid Central Florida here. Central Florida is great for riding. Look at me out here. Look at. This is the high season. Everybody and their freaking brothers down here right now. And I'm riding out here on one of the routes at 55 mile an hour. And uh, look at all the traffic. My goodness gracious, jamming, huh? Look at this. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, two cars. What the hell? So, I mean, I can go out here and ride all day and I, I don't see crap. What the hell is this coming? This looks like a homemade job. Is it a scooter? What the heck is it? I can't tell. I'll give him a wave. I don't know what it was. Got two on, two on the two on the deck there. Who knows what the hell was on that? But anyway, uh, but look at the riding. I mean, this is people's... I drive people crazy, so come on down. Get yourself a motorcycle. You can go out and have a beautiful ride. It's, it's uh, my watch is uh, back on... Uh, the wrong time it's an hour ahead so it's 10 o'clock now 10 o'clock in the morning and what the heck I'm out here and I can actually talk and use my other hand to express myself if you can see my other hand going here but that you know I, I can ride out here and have a very 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 comfortable little ride along the highway here and, and this is one of the not major major roads we know we have 75 and and uh, 95, a two major, and they got the Florida Turnpike. So there's some big roads around here, and it gets most of the traffic on there. But around here, it's nothing. All the birds are over there. I don't know what the hell they're doing. There must, there must be a convention or something. So here we are, taking a ride. And it's a beautiful morning. And all my friends up in New England are freezing their butts off. And I feel guilty. I feel incredibly guilty that I'm down here and I'm enjoying this beautiful weather and I'm riding my freaking motorcycle right now I mean I just I just don't you know I I, I, I just don't uh, I just don't uh, I just feel so terrible, and I, I say to all my friends up in New England, I am terribly, ter freaking directional. I left on again. I, I'm gonna next bike. I'm next bike I buy. It will have to have. It will have to have directionals that go off automatically. I can't stand. I just I'm thinking of other things. That's the last thing on my mind is turning the freaking directional off. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>